Please join me in our call to worship. Sing out, my soul. Sing of the majesty of our God. Let the people say, we are ready for you, O God. God has given voice to the voiceless, satisfied the hungry, and grounded the oppressor. Let the people say, we are ready for you, O God. Sing out for the longing of our souls. Sing out, for Emmanuel is almost among us. Let the people say, We are ready for you, O God. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving God, who teaches us patience in the season of Advent, make us ready to see the coming of the Christ. Though we have become accustomed to the ordinary, teach us to perceive the miraculous. When we think we know what to expect, show us that true wisdom is not to know, but to watch and learn and be changed. As we worship you today, God, work within us and open us to receive the Christ who comes in unexpected ways. In his name we pray. Amen.
fourth Sunday of Advent. Can you even believe it? Next Sunday, for all of the children, we are going to have a virtual birthday party. So don't forget that's next Sunday. And also for everybody, don't forget Wednesday to come to the drive through Bethlehem, First Congregational Church of Winter Park's very first. Our church community will come together in a very special way this year. So this fourth Sunday of Advent is nearing the end of our time of waiting and the time of preparing. But our own personal journey of waiting and preparing, it continues. When Mary found out she was going to have a baby, the angel told her it would be a son. She would call him Jesus and he would be great. Now there was a lot to unpack here, but that was really big news, it was a big deal. Mary must have had so much going on in her mind. She had so much to prepare. She was probably worried, scared, and surprised. But a special baby was coming and Mary prepared. When we hear the big news, how do we accept it? If it's easy, it's no problem. The hard news is difficult to hear. When it is not what we expect, want, need, or have time for, it is sometimes in our nature to fight and not want to accept it. We still need to prepare for our news, whether our preparations are for, are for sad, complicated situations or extremely happy ones like the birth of a baby called Jesus. A baby called Jesus, that is sent by God to surprise us and fill us with love. Whatever our news and however we receive it, we need to remember that it is surrounded in love. Sometimes when we are not able to feel that love, we need to, we need to know those around us are there to remind us of that powerful love. That it's not taken away from us, but it's always with us and shown to us regularly. We also need to remember to be that reminder I am standing in front of my tree that is filled with love. Memories of all parts of our lives, showing fun times, transitions, losses, and handmade treasures. Each year, we unwrap every ornament and are filled with love for each one. So today, we light the candle of love to prepare for the baby that was sent to fill us with love. We light the candle to remember to share love. We light the candle to never forget to receive love. Merry Christmas, everyone. And now together, let us say the prayer that Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from Second Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 16. Hear this lesson about God's covenant with David. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day that I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel? whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? 
Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. You shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod, such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel reading for this final Sunday in Advent for the year of 2020 comes to us from Luke's gospel. And here in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, we hear the mystery of the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Here we are. We have come to the conclusion at long last of our season of preparation, our season of Advent. And as we do, we also come very close to the end of a remarkable year. And though I'll probably use next Sunday to reflect a bit more on the year as a whole on this Advent Sunday, one thing that we can hear in the words of Mary upon hearing this mysterious message from the angel Gabriel is a questioning an inability to process news. How can this be, Mary says. As we've spoken about on a number of occasions in a number of ways over the past weeks, the unexpected is a profound deal of what we encounter in the Advent season. And here on our final Sunday, we encounter again unexpected news. Mary is going to have a child. Her cousin, Elizabeth, in her advanced years, is already months along in her pregnancy. And Mary is left there trying to process all of this in her mind and say, how, how can this be? How? How did this happen? And that's a sentiment I've heard in many ways over and over again in 2020. How did we get here? How did this happen? And of course, there are answers to that, pragmatic, fact-based, scientific answers to some of those questions, particularly as it relates to the pandemic. Other answers are harder to, to pin down because they are intermingled with philosophy and ideology and faith that lead and guide people to making the decisions that they do, which then lead to a resonance of repercussion and consequence outward into the world. So the answer to how can this be, how did we get here, is a complex one. And while we can focus energy on finding those answers, and particularly when it comes to matters of things like justice, and public health, we should explore the answers to those questions because they will help us find wrongs that we need to right and help us to move forward with a better and deeper understanding of things and of people and help us to create a better, safer, more justice-filled and more peaceful, loving world. And that's one part 
of the equation of Mary's question, how can this be? But the other question that we need to hear when Mary asks that is the question about the mystery of it all. Because this is a mysterious encounter. It's with an angel, and it's with news about things that are supposed to be impossible. And it's about the way that this child, this amazing, mysterious, miraculous child of hers, is going to change the world. And this is being said to a very young woman. And she's left there much like any of us would be, regardless of our age, and say, how can this be? But ultimately, to the mystery of that question, Mary resolves simply to say, I am the Lord's servant. It's a remarkable moment, because I know in different ways, with different language, we often say things like this in the face of mystery, in the face of things that we can't perhaps understand or come to terms with, but we know we need to, and maybe we say terms or phrases like, let go and let God. But they all come down to this idea of surrender and of letting go, of not fighting the tides of life, and rather allowing them to carry us where they will and where they need to. And I say this to people who have experienced loss and are in grief all the time. And any of you who have moved through that or are moving through it right now know exactly what I'm talking about. Grief comes in waves. And those waves are frightening, and they are powerful, and we don't necessarily want to feel them. And sometimes we fight them. We push against them as they are trying to carry us somewhere. And the best counsel I can ever give people who are in a space like that is to say, though it's frightening, though it's exhausting, though it's painful, let those waves carry you. Ride it. Because ultimately, those waves are going to take you to shores of healing. That's where they're trying to lead you. And the more you fight it, the more exhausted you're going to be, and the harder that wave is going to hit you the next time. So don't be afraid of it. Allow it to take you where it knows you need to go. Mary didn't fight this news from the angel. She released herself to it. She surrendered to it and simply said, I'm going to let it take me where it needs to. And it takes her to the birth of a beautiful child, a child whom she loves, a child whom we presume, because Joseph disappears so early in the story, a child that she raises essentially as a single parent, a child that she will go through the anguish of watching be publicly executed, as she is one of the only people who remains to be there with him, and a mother who gets to experience her son as alive again. It's a remarkable journey, and she could have fought it from the very beginning today, but she doesn't. And so that leaves us, as all of these wonderful Advent readings have done over these past weeks, it leaves us with the question we should be asking ourselves as readers of this story. If Mary had the courage and the faith to surrender herself to the unknown, to release herself from the burden of trying to fight against that which was trying to influence her life and take her where she needed to go to help her to become who she needed to be. Should we not also do the same? There are moments where when we question life, we are called to do work. The work of justice, the work of peacemaking, the work of forgiveness, the work of compassion and of charity. When we look around and say, how, how did we get here? We need to fix this. In parallel with that, though, there are also those moments in life where we look around at the mystery of it all because it's things beyond our ability to control, things beyond our ability to, to mold or influence. And we can simply only say, how... How did we get here? How did I 
get here? What's going on? And take a moment to close one's eyes, take a deep breath, count to three, and release oneself to the mystery of it all, and allow it to take us where the mystery needs us to go. If we knew where it was, it would be easy, because we'd know the destination, but then there wouldn't be mystery to it. And so much of this wonderful season, the magic of it, is the mystery, the unknown, the miraculous, the unexpected. So today, as we reflect on this remarkable year and the year yet to come, which will be filled with more change, and we consider, how did we get here? Where are we going? As much as we dig deep and do the work we need to do in the days and weeks and months ahead of us, we also perhaps can take a cue from Mary today and simply say, I'm here for the ride. I'm going to let it take me and I'll see where it leads me. And then in miraculous, joyful, unexpected ways, you may find that that mystery leads you exactly where you needed to be, even if you didn't realize it. That's part of the gift of the season. So prepare for the unknown. Surrender to it. And let it sweep you where it will. Amen. Each week we share joys and concerns in this family of faith. And today it is a joy to wish Patty Jenkins a happy birthday. On the 21st, Patty will be 95 years old. So Patty, we celebrate you. Some other joyous events are coming very soon. Please don't forget to drive through Bethlehem from 7 to 8 p.m. on December 23rd. Enter the driveway off of Knowles Avenue to have that magical experience. And on the 24th, please watch your email to see when the Christmas Eve service becomes available. I am so looking forward to some amazing music. We have several prayer concerns today that I would encourage you to keep in your mind and in your heart and to pray for these people during the holiday season. Drew Wisner's stepfather, Scott Hatcher, lost his battle with cancer last Tuesday. So please remember Drew and Carrie and Drew's mother, Chloe, and all of the Wisner family in your thoughts and prayers. Also, Joan Heck's mother died on the 17th. So please keep Joan and all of her family members in your thoughts and prayers. Today, I want to lift up for a special prayer and our support, all of those people who, in Christ-like love, are caring for their loved ones who are critically ill or terminally ill, and for everyone caring for their loved ones who are mentally ill or have dementia. Uh, these people are amazing examples of the love of Christ. So let us include them in our prayers this week. Let us lift up today all of the concerns of each of our hearts. Let us pray now after a moment of silence. God of love, as we move closer to the end of the Advent season, we joyfully expect the coming of the Christ. Grant us true wisdom that we may know what to expect. Show us the truth that Jesus did not come to save us from waiting. Instead, he taught us the revolutionary power of true patience. Jesus did not come to solve all of the world's problems. Instead, he showed us how to see problems as ways to grow and learn, to become closer to you, and to appreciate the preciousness of this life that you have given to us. May we know that the Christ did not come 
to claim a temporary victory, but for the total transformation of the human heart and mind. We ask you, God, for the wisdom to see the true coming of Christ in this world and in our lives. As we move closer to the end of this Advent season, we seek to become like Christ ourselves, to stand on the side of the poor and the oppressed, to be present with those who are ill, those who are sad, and those who are grieving. And we thank you, God, for the many times that you have been present at the points of our own poverty and oppression. Sometimes, God, it was only you present when we were sick or sad or lost in grief. Today, God, we say a special prayer for those who are caregivers, for the critically and terminally ill, and for those who love and support those with mental illness and with dementia. God, support them, for they are tired and worried and some are alone, but they continue to do your work and to care for your beloved children. God, grant them your presence and your peace and give us eyes to see that their work is the coming of Christ in our midst. God, in this holy season, open our hearts and minds and eyes that we may see your coming in joy and in sorrow when we are together and when we are alone, as we dwell in hope and when we are overcome with fears. God, this is our prayer. Be with us and help us to see the coming of the Christ anew this year. In his name we pray. Amen. Our invitation to offering. In all spaces and in all times, God comes to us in ways often unexpected. In fullness and in joy, God reveals what is wonderful and marvelous. In celebration of God's yearning to be with us and show us the marvels we share, we come now to this time of offering and extend our joyful thanksgiving in the giving of our gifts and offerings. We thank you for your continued support of the church through your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings. Those can be made here now on this page with the Donate Now button, or you can mail them to the church office. May God continue to bless you, keep you safe. Amen.
now as we leave this time of worship together, let us go forth without fear, creating in our lives a space for the one who longs to dwell with us, to share our lives and bless our world, and lead us into the kingdom of justice and of peace, both today and all of our days yet to come. Amen. Thank you.